Well, we're back uh, at the site, the next Reformation. Um, if you've watched any of the videos or read the little bit of intro I put on there, um, this is not my Reformation or anything I'm trying to start. I have no control over anything, but I believe with all my heart it's an act of God. He is trying to do this. I don't mean our video or our little site, but I mean I'm just trying to inform people, anybody that'll hear, that I believe God is doing the next or another Reformation. Remember, there's been called the Great Awakening, the Great Reformation. We can go into detail about that now. But um, throughout history, God has done things to get his people back to him, not only contained within the pages of the Bible from cover to cover, you can see that, but then also throughout the history of the church, what we would call the Christian church, there's been times where there were dark ages or whatever. I mean, if you know anything about history, when the printing press was invented and people were able to get the Bible in the hands of the common man instead of the churches saying, no, no, you're all too dumb, too stupid to be able to understand. Only as highly educated uh, priests or ministers or whatever, the only ones that are smart enough to handle the Word of God and be able to tell it to you. Um, but I'm here to tell you, that is not the way God intended it. Never has been. And over history, He's done different things. I, I don't want to get into too much detail now, but if you know anything about the history of the church and God's moving among men to bring his people back to him, you know that he is, do, you know, you'll, you'll see uh, hopefully before too long that when I tell you some of the things that God is revealing to just common, simple people, he's clearly trying to wake us up and to bring us back to his ways. They're, they're still in the Bible, the exact same Bible that you have at your house. You don't have to get the latest, greatest, newest version I'm not selling or supporting any new version of the Bible or anything like that. This is not a new church. I'm not trying to start a church. I'm not part of a new church. It's just I'm, I'm a common man that's seeing what God is doing. Some people are aware, some are not. And I'm just trying to share for those that are wondering or that don't have any idea, guess what? God is alive and well and active and moving in our world. I would love to tell you, I've known of many cases where people that I've known have had horrible illnesses and, you know, me and others have prayed for them. We've tried to follow biblical prescription, you know, laying uh, hands on them, anointing them with oil, praying in faith that they would be healed. And for whatever reason, it didn't happen. And I don't know if you're like me, you've wondered, what's going on? Why is the church seemingly not the strong body of believers that it should be. I mean, there's so much on TV about prosperity and how you can become rich. I mean, Yeshua never taught anything like that. That's not anything about his message. His message was to humble yourself before the Lord of all creation, to love him and to keep his commandments. That's, you know, and his job was to get people back to God. He actually died on the cross to make a way that, that was possible, that despite the sins that men had committed, the children of Israel and, and how they had so farly gotten away from being able to come into the presence of the Holy God to worship Him in His temple or in any way, they were so far uh, excluded because of their sin, His death on the cross paid the way for that. And I think most Christians, and hopefully most of you hearing that, you know, are not shocked by that, but the reality is that's why he came, among other things, but that's the gist of it, to make the way to be a sacrifice once for all, to give us a way to turn back to God. But it doesn't mean we then start our own ways and start creating denominations and church doctrines and, you know, there's a thousand different brands of Christianity out there, and yet all he was wanting us to do was to turn from our evil ways where we were going against God's commandments, and he wanted us to get back to God's commandments as they're prescribed in the Torah, keep those as they're prescribed as best you're able to, depending on where you live and when you live now, because we have no temple. There's a lot of things in the Bible cannot be kept until there's an actual temple and priesthood in place, as you'll, you'll see as you read further in the Word. 
But the whole idea was get us back to keeping God's commandments and to following His ways. The Bible says very clearly that sin is the transgression of the Torah. And I'm sorry I don't have the passage right in front of me. You'll find that in 1 John, the book of 1 John. And it might even be in James. I forget which one is the exact quote. I'm sorry I should have had that because sometimes I speak off the top of my head. But um, if you watch any of our videos, you'll understand that. Uh, what I want to tell you today, along the lines of God bringing a reformation or a whatever you want to call it, a thing where he's doing something in the world to bring people back to his ways. It's not, a, not an organization or anything man could orchestrate. I don't think men would even have thought of this, you know, what, what I see God doing. But one of the pieces I want to talk about today in this little video is about the name of God. And I, if, if we had longer, you know, if I wanted to go on for an hour, I could go into all the history. What I'm going to do instead, I've got a handful of books over here that I'm going to just hold up to the camera. And I want you to, you know, if you can, take a look at these. If you have an interest at all, this is, these are volumes of research that men have done, smarter guys than me, people that know the Hebrew and know their Bible better than me. But they've done the research. They've, uh, you know, explored, I mean, you know, there, there's some incredible information here, but what I want you to say, uh, understand is I didn't just look at a website and some guy said, oh, yeah, we should pronounce God's name this way. Um, but I've actually heard other ways that people try to explain you should pronounce God's name, and they just never set right with me. I mean, I'm no scholar. You'll find that out pretty quick. I don't claim to be, but just... I don't know how to describe it other than sometime when something's true or a truth, it just kind of resonates in your heart. And I akin that to, uh, or liken that to the Holy Spirit, you know, saying, mm, yeah, that doesn't sound right, or, oh, yes, that is truth. Listen to that. So let me show you just some of the books to introduce. There's actually, well, essentially two guys that I would recommend. Now, it doesn't mean everything these guys say I agree with or them, me, and it doesn't mean that you should listen to every word out of their mouths or whatever. Like any any person that's telling you about God, you need to get to the Bible and see if what they say is true. But these guys have done a lot of research, extra biblical sources, and some actual boots on the ground, as I like to call it, or actual walking out things in the land of Israel and, and through archaeology and stuff. And they've discovered some uh, incredible things, but I think they've done a good job of uh, bringing out some of the truths. The main point I want to bring up is that they've they've come up with uh, what they believe the most likely way of pronouncing the name of God. And you've heard of Jehovah. That's how we say it a lot of times in English. It actually appears in your English Bible. I don't know if all versions, but even in my King James, there's a handful of times where it would show up and it's actually spelled out Jehovah. But when I learned one day that the because of what Judaism had a tradition for several centuries and then the Christians adopted it, there's a tradition where instead of, if you come across the name of God in the Bible, it would be four letters. It would uh, be in Hebrew, it would be the Yod, He, Vav, He. You've probably heard of that. Um, I might even have something that will have a picture of that, but... Um, Again, I'm not trying to be a teacher. I'm trying to just get information out. But some people say, oh, you pronounce it Yahweh or Yahuwah and all, you know, several different things. But these guys go into detail in varying, in a couple different books to explain where they came up with it, how it agrees with the grammar and, and the just the normal linguistics of Hebrew. If If someone is teaching stuff and they're not a Hebrew expert and they really don't speak the language, it's hard for me to believe that I should trust them, you know. But here, you know, these two guys I'll, I'll mention in a second. Take the books if you you know want. I mean, I'm not selling anything. I don't have a website to sell stuff. I would just recommend if you're interested, take a look at them. There's a lot of good information. The reason I bring the first one up, even though it's not quite the name of God, but it deals with uh, Jesus or Yeshua, because I think that's one of the truths not only God's name, but the Jesus' name is being revealed as it was in Hebrew, which has, you know, there's a vast amount of depth to the name Yeshua or Yehoshua 
as I've said before, um, you know, whereas the name Jesus means nothing in Hebrew. It's not there. It's a, you know, they the Greeks tried to figure out a way to say Yeshua in their language, and then in, when the Latin, you know, people tried to, you know, adapt it or came into English, the best they could come up with is Jesus, and, you know, it just, it's meaningless in Hebrew or, you know, to the people of that era when Yeshua actually lived. But here's a book. Now, again, this is uh, by a guy by the name of Nehemia Gordon. He's not a Christian. He's pretty uh, blunt about saying he doesn't believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, but he is an or well, he's he was raised Orthodox, but he's what's called a Karaite Jew. So he's a Jewish man, well versed in Hebrew and in the Hebrew Scriptures, and he goes. He actually <laughs> does an incredible job, you know, explaining um, or or you know arguing for the name Yeshua in Hebrew and the meaning behind it, as opposed to the Greek version Jesus. Anyhow. Great source. If you haven't seen it, check it out. That's one. Remember that name, though, in the Hemia Gordon. He's, you know, an incredible uh, uh, resource. Um, uh, along with him, Nehemia and the guy by the name of Keith Johnson both wrote this book, which this is one of the first books I got. Uh, not ever, but um, it was a really cool book. It's called A Prayer to Our Father, and they go into the detail of the uh, Lord, what's called the Lord's Prayer, and they even help you under, you know, learn how to say it in Hebrew and how Yeshua might have actually said it when he spoke it forth, you know, from the uh, from the uh, cliff uh, or the hills up in uh, the Galilee. Now, before I forget, though, this because a lot of this is all getting to the name of God. This is an incredible book. Um, Keith Johnson, who was one of the guys from the last book I showed, he went further in his studies and shows. Uh, wrote this book, His Hallowed Name Revealed Again. I've been through this multiple times. I mean, it is just incredible. And it's not that Keith is so brilliant, but that God gave him information. Nehemiah was a great resource for him. And he's just put together an incredible uh, resource. Definitely get this if you haven't, uh, just to learn what he what he has to share there. Um, and lastly, for now, there's I, I'll, I'll, I might be able to get one or two others. Um, there's this is a later book by Nehemia. He goes into more detail, and it's called "Shattering the Conspiracy of Silence," as you can see. But it's uh, it goes into the uh, pronunciation of God's name again, and explains some of the history of how you know in Judaism, people were basically told do not speak the name of God. In fact, uh, people that were trying to uh, subjugate the Jews in history um, in the olden days had basically outlawed speaking the name of God. But what's incredible is this guy, as you'll learn if you read these books, around the time that 9-11 happened when, you know, a couple of planes were flying into the, the World Trade Centers in New York and these guys were yelling out the name of their God as their, you know, the, the Muslim guys were speaking their the name of their God as they're, you know, going to their death and thinking they're, you know, doing a thing for their God. This guy was this Nehemia guy, and others were learning, or God was opening their eyes to the pronunciation, or, or at least getting them to communicate the pronunciation of the God, the true God's name. I mean, the timing is not accidental by any means. But again, you figure it out for yourself. This is a really cool book, though it's very small. You can see it. Nehemia Gordon wrote this. It's the naming of Jesus in the Hebrew Matthew. Now um, he talks about. Well, it's a, it's a, you know, basically where uh, Mary was told to name her son Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. He explains that in detail and does a great job. Again, that's Nehemia Gordon. And then you can get, nowadays, the Hebrew Gospel of Matthew. I can't, I don't have time for all the, uh, the history behind it or, or where this guy came up with it, but it's written by a guy named George Howard. And so you can actually have a translation from the Hebrew of just the Gospel of Matthew, where many have told us that it was all uh, written in Greek, that the whole New Testament was in Greek. And come to find out, you know, if the guys were Hebrew speakers, maybe some Aramaic, you could argue that. But there's a lot of, I mean, this this helps explain how the, uh, the Hebrew is more likely what was spoken and what some of the things were written in. Uh, I need to close for now, but the name of God... I'll talk more about it because to me it's one of the hugest things we need to know about, okay?